So hello, I'm Nate Duncan. I'm a senior software developer with CarMax. I've worked for CarMax for about 10 years now and I've worked in the IT industry in a number of different roles, largely in the uh, software development space for the last 18 years. I've worn quite a few hats from software developer to project manager and now I'm working on the operations team for CarMax.com and trying to help CarMax implement DevOps practices. So let me tell you a little bit about CarMax to start off. Uh, CarMax is the original used car industry disruptor. When we entered the market, we were kind of unique. We offered a unique offering where we are offering a clear and transparent offer to our customers. We're trying to create a unique experience for them to really make, revolutionize it. We are the nation's re largest retailer of used vehicles. We have over 180 stores in 39 states. We have sold 10 million or more used vehicles and wholesale vehicles. We have appraised 25 and a half million cars for our customers, and we are a top 10 used car loan in originator, 24,000 associates. And probably my favorite one is CarMax is one of Fortune 100 best places to work for the last 13 years. And I work on the online systems team and the primary thing we support is CarMax.com. CarMax.com serves up more than, uh, serves up millions of hits to our customers every single day. We, it's supported by 140 different .NET applications, sites, and services. We are in a hybrid model where we have 34 on-prem servers. We have six primary Azure services that deliver up the website itself, but we are expanding into microsites and microservices actively uh, right now. We're trying to get more and more of our features up into the cloud. And our current flow map, we kind of have a complex system. This is, we call, like to call this the spider web. Everybody has a good understanding of how CarMax.com works now. Everyone's on the same page? Good, excellent. Uh, our business needs have been changing over the last few years. We are seeing increased competition entering our used car space, and these competitors are often bringing in advanced technology. While CarMax continues to commit ourselves to delivering a superior customer experience, that customer experience is changing throughout the years. We're finding that our customers are wanting to, we're trying to really enable our customers to shop with us the way they want to shop. We're finding more and more customers are wanting to shop with us online, and they want to do more things online, like they want to do their findings online, they want to search for cars, they want to get a, little, a lot more research done before they actually transition into the store experience. And these customers are using more technology as part of this experience. They're wanting to use their iPhones and their, their, their Android applications, and they want to use tablets, and they want to do a lot, use a lot more technology as part of this car shopping experience. But we want to maintain a seamless experience for our customers as they transition from the online experience into the store. So we've had a lot of change that's coming up for us that we really want to support from an online to systems team perspective. From CarMax, we've had a decent journey here for the last seven years. We started off as a, largely a waterfall shop, I'm sure everybody's familiar with waterfall, where you have this big upfront design session where you gather all the requirements and you put it all together and you say, this is what we want to build. And then the developers go behind the black curtain and they do their thing and they code up the things and then you have this big reveal months or years later where here's the product, here's the thing at the very end. And what we found was oftentimes the things that people said that they want weren't really what the customers needed at the very end of the process. So we said there has to be a better way. And we went out and evaluated industry best standards. And what we found was Agile. So about six or seven years ago, we started transforming ourselves into an Agile shop where we still define the project at the very beginning. It's still project-based, but we do these iterative little mini waterfalls, these iterative deployment processes where we do a little bit of building, and then we deploy it out to our customers to get feedback and evaluate it. It's still usually months or years from beginning to end. It's still project-based, and we said, well, there's probably a better way. And so we've really been shifting from Agile now into these product teams. And we went out to Silicon Valley, we went to uh, to evaluate how, what are the best practices, what's the best way to deliver software. And I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with Marty Kagan, but his inspired book was really inspiring for CarMax. And he, one of the things he preached was these product teams. And the idea behind a product team is instead of saying, I want you to build a new car page. Instead of saying, I want you to deliver 360 degree photos of a car. Instead of saying, I want you to do, uh, enable an online shopping experience, we define these key metrics. And these key metrics can be something like, I want you, your team is going to deliver more leads to the stores. And your team is going to focus on web page performance. And your team is going to focus on the user experience in the digital space, from both from an SEO perspective and from a um, like digital merchandise, like the images that are showing up for vehicles. And so instead of having these projects defined, we define these key metrics, and the product teams are then empowered to go and optimize those metrics. 
and there's a consistent review. There's a periodic review cycle of those metrics to make sure that we're still on track and we're still value, we're still doing the right metrics. Um, but fundamentally, those key, these those product teams then go out into a build, measure, learn cycle, and these build, measure, learn cycles are one where you go off and you brainstorm some ideas, you figure out what are the things we think customers might like, and then you build that software, and then you deliver it to the production, you measure what's going on, like is it actually increasing leads? Are we seeing more conversions from the home page into searching for cars? And then you learn from that, like if we change this photo so the car points into the page instead of out of the page, we get more conversion. And so we use things that are working well, and we feed that back into the loop, and then we make more changes based on that information. And the idea is that we want to move quickly through this loop, and we want to iterate a whole bunch of times and release a bunch of things so that we can get the features that are working well out to our customers as quickly as possible. And things that aren't working well, we want to fail, but we want to fail fast. So failure is OK as long as you fail quickly. We don't want to spend a bunch of time on something that's not working well for us. But at the end of the day, it still needs to be robust and scalable software. We can't just release small little things that are fragile and that are going to fall apart. We still need to, maybe your initial iteration, when you first get into that first build cycle, it might be something that's quick, very simple. But as you keep moving through that process, you need to keep hardening that software so it gets better and better as you go through that cycle. And finally, you need to be able to release with confidence. Because if we're releasing a bunch of small things all the time, we need to be able to feel confident as part of that release cycle to make sure things are working. So in order to support these product teams, in order to support all of these iterations, in order to support all these releases, we, again, looked at the product teams that were effective. And we said, well, DevOps practices are kind of hand in hand with this product development idea. So for CarMax, DevOps has one definition. I'm sure if you talk to 20 different people, you get 20 different definitions of DevOps. But for us, it's the principles and methodologies used to deliver quality software and services to customers as quickly as possible. So the key ideas for us, the key metrics, the key principles, are we want to enable our teams. We don't want to be a support. We want to enable the teams to do what they need to do. So we want to make sure they have all the resources they need in order to deliver the software to get the information that they need. We also want to enable reliability because, again, we want to protect the website performance. We don't want to just release things and then have them fail. We want to make sure everything stays up and stable so that our customers can continue to use our site. But, and we also want to support rapid delivery. So the idea is we want to allow the, our teams to take so software and release it to production as quickly as possible. But we also want to do it in a collaborative way. So we want to work closely with our development teams and our operations teams and all the product teams working with each other to make sure that we're doing things the most effective and efficient ways as possible. So CarMax has been using AppDynamics, and we actually picked up AppDynamics just before we started this product mentality before we started down this journey of DevOps. And AppDynamics has absolutely been very key to this journey for us to go from no DevOps or very limited to our progression through DevOps. And one of the first ways is in enabling us to be reliable with our business transactions. Right out of the box, AppDynamics does a really great job trying to proactively identify here's some business transactions that I think that are going to be important to you. For CarMax, we then take those business transactions and things that are important to us, we kind of lump together into major business transactions. So for example, we have a lot of SEO traffic coming from customers, coming from like Google searches. And those all come into a certain set of pages that look like carmax.com slash car slash make model year. And they'll drop onto one of those pages. Instead of having a business transaction for each one of those make model year combinations, which would be a lot, we have one business transaction for that entire make model year. If we're things that are really important, maybe we're doing a test. Maybe we want to say, for the 2011 Toyota Camrys, we want to do a test where we're improving performance of that particular page to see if we get more SEO traffic, to see if we get more conversion. So we can set up a business transaction specific to that one make model year. We can run our test. We can even baseline it against a couple other make model years. And then we can see how the performance does from an infrastructure perspective and from the user's perspective. So we can create these temporary business transactions that live for the life of the test, just for a couple months. And for things where we care about the overall performance of an application, for something like uh, our configuration service, we might just have the, let it flow into the all other traffic bucket. And we say, we care about it as a whole, but not anything specifically. Another way is we, we've created these decisioning dashboards. So 
everybody's created a dashboard. I know I've created a bunch of them, and we don't want them to be just pretty graphs. Pretty graphs are cool, charts and numbers are really cool, but having something you can actually act on, having something that you can actually make decisions on, key business decisions on, that's what we're really looking for. So the idea here is we want to create these dashboards, and we have some really awesome dashboards that are put together that are very, very long. You scroll from top to bottom and they have a lot of detailed information. And the idea is you can start out at the top, and this is the top of one of our major ones for CarMax.com, and this particular graph shows you that the calls for CarMax.com, the solid blue line, is trending right around baseline. So we have normal levels of calls. The, uh, if there's a big red blob, that would indicate there's errors. If there's a big yellow or orange blob, you have slow or very slow calls. So I can see at a glance, CarMax.com, serving up normal levels of traffic, and we don't have a bunch of slowness or errors. I can then scroll down and see instance metrics. So if I have a problem and we're investigating something, I see the high level, I can maybe see a bunch of errors. I can scroll down and look how the individual instances are performing. So in this case, I can see all the instances are load balanced together, and I can also see that the individual instances, east, west, one, two, three, those are all performing well as well. So if I had a big red blob on just one of the instances, maybe that one's unhealthy, take it out of the load balancer, remediate, drop it back in, we're good. We can also see, again, continuing to scroll down, CPU metrics, how is the CPU doing on these different servers? And the same thing with memory. So if I see CPU jumping on all the servers or one more of the servers, I know I have a CPU problem. I can see memory correlated. And again, I can tie that back up to the top of the graph, top of the dashboard, by looking at so if I see calls jumping at the top and I see CPU jumping down here, it's probably caused by the increase in traffic. We can't handle the load that's currently coming on the website. We can also see network and database traffic. So again, I think the network team and the database team often get a lot of flack and they often get a lot of fingers pointed at them. In this particular case, with using app dynamics, I'm able to correlate the high level to the instance, to the hardware metrics, to the database and network traffic. So if I was having a network problem, I would see my network, my network going up or down. Or if I'm having database problems, I could see the database calls jumping or falling. So having all of that correlated into one screen has been very instrumental for us. And then finally, it, we get individual business transaction detail as little graphs at the very bottom of the dashboard. So you can see from a very high level all the way down to very detailed information about what's going on with CarMax.com in one screen that anybody can use. And one of my favorite use cases, I was on a conference call and my manager chimed up with, hey, I'm looking at the dashboard and everything looks good. So they're so easy, even a manager can use them. So dashboarding though, isn't just for support. We've enabled our product teams to go and create dashboards as well. And we've encouraged them, we've tried to train them into using these dashboards. And the idea is they can use these dashboards and they can create their own dashboards. They can get a high level view of what's going on by the ones we've created for them, and they can go and create their own dashboards for the very specific metrics they're interested in. They're running a test that is do, looking at the performance of a certain page, they can create a business transaction, and they can create a dashboard specifically around that and look at it all the time. And we can create, so we have multiple views of our application specific to who's using it and who's needing it at that time. Another way it's helped us is in reliability. So if you look at this graph, you can see that the calls suddenly jump on this one particular service. This is a problem, right? Maybe. So it's just a routine process. By expanding the time period, by looking over time, we're able to see, no, this isn't actually a problem. This is a routine process. This is actually our website filling its cache with ship rate information. So these dashboards allow us to be reliable because sometimes we see problems and then we can say, is this historically the, the pattern or is this something new that we haven't seen before? Another way AppDynamics has helped us is in reliability. We've created multiple kinds of alerts. And some of the cool things about alerts with AppDynamics is you can do warning versus critical. And the idea that we use for warning, warning is something where if it's during core business hours, you probably want to look at it. So for CPU, which I'll cover in just a second, if it's more than 70% CPU, probably want to check it out during the day. But it's not something you want to wake up a developer or somebody for. For critical, those are things that we want to actually wake people up for, and we want to make sure those are working even after hours. Uh, we can also use multiple notification types. So for warnings, those often get emailed to me or somebody on my team, and we'll go and dig into them next business day. If it's critical, then suddenly it sends it as a, as a text message to the pager of the current on-call person. And the alert triggers can be something like response time by baseline. AppDynamics generates baseline information based on performance and actively models that as you're going along. 
And the response time, you can say, well, if it's more than three standard deviations slower than baseline, then you want to go ahead and create an alert. We can also do it like on CPU utilization, or my favorite one is error percentage. We often have things, we have 160 applications involved here, and sometimes one of them will have like a database connection error for just a minute, and it's unable to connect to the database for whatever reason. You'll see this huge spike in errors, but won't actually be a problem. If we were alerting based on baseline, we probably would have got alerted about that. But since we're looking at error percentage, that's, we can take a calculation of the number of errors and divide it by the number of calls, and then you have the error percentage. And finally, we have a denial of service alert, which looks at our calls and says, if it's more than 10 times more than our normal level of calls, then we'll get an alert about denial of service. Another way it's helped us is with uh, reliability for our CPU monitoring. We actually got a proactive alert, 70% CPU alert, for one of our delivery instances. And what we were seeing by looking at three months worth of data, again, going back in time, looking at more and more information, we we're able to see that the overall CPU utilization over time is going up, and that's a problem. And we were also able to see that, if you notice, we use green-blue deployment models, so as the colors change, that as we release from week to week to week, that the CPU actually goes down right after we release, and then throughout that week it goes back up. So CPU is increasing, it's being helped by releases, and we're able to scroll up higher in the, in the, in the dashboard and see that it's not actually correlating with the traffic on the site. So if we were seeing increase in traffic over the site and increasing CPU, it's a, it's a good problem to have, but it's fundamentally being caused by customer traffic. But in this case, it wasn't actually correlated with customer traffic at all. So we had some underlying bug that was deep in our pipeline that was actually causing our CPU utilization to go over time because we were ineffectively um, caching some data. But by getting this proactive response, by getting this proactive alert, by being able to identify it's not, the things that it's not, we were able to re do some quick remediation, which is on Fridays, we reboot the servers to bring the CPU back down, and then we would watch it go back up over the weekend. So that bought us some more time. But it also gave us some time since we got alerted so much before that we were able to say, we were able to buy our developers enough time to identify the underlying issue, fix it, get it rolled out before it actually become a conduct a customer impact. Uh, another way AppDynamics has helped us is in our QA pipeline. I'm sure most people, if you've done software development, you've seen this one before, where the cost of fixing a bug is much higher the farther right you get in the curve. So AppDynamics has helped us move left in this curve so that we can find bugs and fix them more cheaply. And what the main way we've done this is we have these automated load tests that run against our QA environment. So we actually go off to our IS logs in production and sample 50,000 different calls, actual production calls over the last 24 hours. We then have a load test that executes those over against, against our QA environment. And since our QA environment is instrumented in AppDynamics the same way you are in production, we have the same business transactions, we have the same dashboards, we have the same information. And we run this load test every day for about 50 minutes so every day we get this very good snapshot of, here's our current QA environment, here's our current code in QA. We've run a bunch of production calls against QA. Now we can go into AppDynamics and see how it's doing. And if everything's great, then we move on and we can feel good about it. But this has caught about one bug once every couple months for us, which would have normally gotten released to production. Another way is in releases. AppDynamics has been instrumental enabling rapid delivery for us and delivery confidence. Does this look like your team after a release where you huddle around the monitor? I know I've been there in the past. So, and then you've released it and inevitably somebody comes along and says, well, how is the site doing? We just did this release. Well, is, are we, have we had it change in customer traffic? Is our response time normal? What does that really mean? In the past, before AppDynamics, I probably would have logged onto the site, clicked around a little bit. Yeah, I think things are fine. Or like, are we receiving a bunch of errors? And the idea with the errors is maybe I'd have to go dig through logs and say, yeah, I think I kind of see a problem, maybe not. But to try to correlate the errors with the release was often very difficult. So these are very, very tough questions to answer before AppDynamics. After AppDynamics, using these dashboards, using this deep insight that AppDynamics get, gains us, we're able to proactively review our, our releases right after release. And it's not just me, it's not just an operations team, it's all the product teams can go and review their own things as part of a proactive release monitoring site. So instead of everybody huddling, huddling around the monitor of the person releasing things, everybody huddles around their own monitor to make sure their stuff 
their, their graphs, their charts, their metrics are all good after the release. So from this one graph, we actually had a release at 11.30 on this day, and then you see a big yellow blob jumping up, that's not a problem either. That's our site filling its cache with car information post-release. And I'm able to see this every single release. So I can also go back in time and see the same yellow blob. And I'm used to re proactively reviewing this, so I see the same yellow blob every time. But I can also see that the calls are not affected. I'm not seeing a bunch of errors. I'm not seeing a bunch of slowness. Fundamentally, things are pretty good post-release. I can also feel confident that I've actually released the website. So you can see the first set of lines on the left, and then they drop off, and a new set of lines comes up. So I can see my servers switching from green to blue in one graph. We've released. That's awesome. I can also see that it, I'm not introduced a CPU or memory problem as part of this release. And then I can see the individual business transaction. So the car page, if you remember, I mentioned that the car page is filling its cache right after release, and it usually takes about 30 minutes. That big yellow blob, that's the car page filling its cache. But I can also see that the home page is still performing like it normally does post-release. So I can feel confident. I can feel good. We do multiple releases every week. And we, if we have any problems with our, our releases, we are able to identify them within minutes. This has allowed us to eliminate downtime post-releases. I remember in the last session, somebody asked, well, how do you, releases are often fraught with peril. There's often problems post-release. Yes, we used to be in that same position. And yes, occasionally, we're still in that same position now. But we're able to proactively review. We're able to get this deep insight from AppDynamics by having all this different data correlated together. And that's allowed us to identify issues quickly. It's enabled us to minimize downtime. It's greatly increased our, our uh, confidence in releases. And it's an allowed us to quickly speed up our feedback loop to enable our product teams to deliver more features, to test more things, and to maximize the benefit we're providing to the business. So another way AppDynamics has helped us, similar to proactive review post-release, is with production problems. And we, this actually happened about two weeks ago, where we got a report that some of our users, not all of them, just a couple of them, some of them, are receiving this error. And the error is not very helpful. We're sorry an error occurred, the link you clicked, the URL you typed in your browser didn't work. Everybody knows what that means, right? Everybody, somebody knows how to fix this? This was in an application that my team owns the, uh, we own the underlying architecture, the hardware, but we don't actually own the application. So this is some other team's code running on our servers. But how would you respond to this? You want to spin up a war room, get everybody into a room, talk about it, try to figure this out? Spin up a conference call, kind of do the same thing over, only over the phone? Hope it goes away? I'm not getting it. Whenever I logged onto the website, it worked fine for me. So there's not a problem. You dig through logs, you point at some other team. I know my, my favorite you know, one to point at is DBAs. DBAs did it, or the, or the networking team. But what do you, how do you respond to this? So, I looked in App Dynamics, and again, this took about surprisingly little time for something that I'm really unfamiliar with. So inside of App Dynamics, I come and look at the dashboard for the particular website. And the first thing that jumps out at me, and I'm sure everybody sees it, there's a big red blob. You can see that response time is jumping. And you can see that the errors are jumping, kind of together. So first thing I learned, within minutes, there is a problem. The next thing I looked at was, well, is it a problem with this, service, this website itself? Or, well, I saw calls going to this router service taking 12 and a half seconds on average. Well, maybe that's normal. So again, I compared a previous time slice for about the same day, about a week before, and it was actually taking milliseconds. So taking 12 and a half seconds, that's a problem. Let me dig into that service. So I look at that service in AppDynamics, and I see a similar story. I see the response time jumping in a similar pattern. I'm seeing the errors jumping in a similar pattern. And then I'm looking around and I see, well, there's this other service, 16 and a half seconds. Maybe that's the problem. So again, I compare the same dashboard, the same view to the previous week, and I can see that it actually normally takes milliseconds. OK, this one right here, this other vehicle service, that's the problem. So I dig into that one. And I look at this vehicle service, and I look at the dashboard. Response time's jumping, similar pattern. But the errors, if you notice the scale, uh, it's just 0, 1, and 2. So that's not the same pattern. So there's something going on with the service. And let me dig into the service. Another awesome thing AppDynamics does, this is all out of the box functionality. This is not like one of the dashboards we've created and curated. This is just straight out of the box. So I dig into the service, and it gathers you know, transaction snapshots. And I look at the snapshots, and I look at the long-running snapshots. 
and I see this one call to map vehicle images, and it's taking 2.8 million milliseconds, or almost 47 minutes for this one call. So this tells me what's going on. One, this service is not timing out at all. So step to developers, we probably need some sort of timeout in here. No, no call should ever take 47 minutes. No reasonable call, at least not this one. The next thing is, well, what's, what's this thing actually doing? So I go back to the dashboard and I say, well, of, on here I see a bunch of calls to our main image service taking 3.1 seconds on average. I know the image service doesn't normally take three seconds. And that was the fundamental problem, the, the ultimate issue. Instead of pointing fingers and saying, well, it's your application, you need to fix this, or getting into a warm and spending hours on the phone trying to figure this out, all the while customers are getting errors or slowness, we're able to identify this is the actual problem. It's with image two. We're able to restart the unhealthy instance, get it back up and running, get it working, and we're able to fix this one very quickly. So we've enabled our product, power, product team. Instead of me needing to do this, the actual product team could have done this work. There was no conference call, no war room, no finger pointing, and this is my favorite one. We have a clear root cause. That was always my, the thing I liked the least out of conference calls. You get to that awkward end where things seem to be working again, and, but nobody's really sure what actually caused, caused it to start working again. You always want that clear root cause so you can feel good, you can go back to bed and not have to worry about it. And there was, we helped minimize the customer impact because if it wasn't for AppDynamics, there would have been, this would have persisted for a lot longer. So I have a couple of my favorite AppDynamics stories of production problems or things that it's enabled us to do that we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. So we have online financing in a limited set of markets. We are trying to, we're enabling our customers to submit credit applications online. And these are high value customers. If you apply for financing and get approved online, then come into the store, you're much more likely to buy a car from us. So these are super high value customers, but we had a problem with one of our releases where one of our six servers was affected by a content issue. And one out of six servers was throwing errors for our customers. And if you, have a customer facing thing for like something, especially something like applying for financing, it's not something that you have your normal day to day employees doing. So we had one of six servers affected, failing for our customers, and we would have had to normally wait for our customers to call in. We probably might have even ignored the first customer saying, hey, I've got a problem, until we got the second or third customer reporting in. And what we found is usually underneath each one customer reporting a problem, there's probably 500 or 1,000 that's not reporting it. So this would have been a really big deal if we would have let it sit. But proactive monitoring post-release enabled us to catch this within 20 minutes. So we did the release, we were looking through the dashboards. I saw that the errors for this one particular business transactions was going up where previously it didn't have errors. So okay, there's a problem. I dig into the individual business transaction, dig into the snapshots, and I was able to see that there are errors coming in. And I only saw errors coming from one particular server. So, that triggered a, a quick conference with the product team that owned it, and they were able to see that the, the content on that server was missing, and they got the content deployed to that server. Within an hour, we had it remediated, and our customers were back online and with no more errors. Before AppDynamics, this probably would have taken a week or more to identify and fix. Another CPU issue we have is we had a code change that caused a, uh, we had a race condition introduced where as the server is spinning up and caching that vehicle information, it was making a call to an API to get information. While it was making that call, other customers are coming in recommending more and more, more, and more vehicles, just, just the nature of our site. But this race condition ensued where each, each server was trying to get the same vehicle information many, many, many times, which was causing our CPU to, usage to go way up, and it was causing us to be, start to go offline because our CPU utilization was getting maxed out. Before AppDynamics, something like this, we would have only got notified about once the servers have actually gone down. And it would, we would typically have seen these things take about one to two hours worth of downtime. With AppDynamics, we were able to identify the issue before we actually got our first alert, before the site went down. And by proactively reviewing this post-release, we caught it before there was any downtime. We had a little bit of slowness, but we got it fixed well before and we were able to roll back before the customers got impacted. Another one is BingBot. I'm sure people are familiar with Bing. It's the other Google. Um, we had that high CPU issue. And one of the things feeding into that, our high CPU issues, the CPU issue growing over time, was that we were seeing increased calls, some increased calls during that event. 
And what was going on was BingBot was actually crawling us during our high customer times. Before AppDynamics, we would have had limited to no visibility of Bing crawling our website. Bing comes along and Bing's very nice, and inside of the request headers it says, hey, I'm Bing, and it's crawling your website. Before AppDynamics, we would have had no idea that was actually Bing traffic increasing up during our high customer times. With AppDynamics, we actually created a business transaction for our SEO traffic. And our SEO traffic is really important to us, so that's why we want to watch it very closely. We want to know when they're coming in and crawling us, and we also want to have an idea of what they're actually crawling. So we can create a business transaction in AppDynamics that says that looks at the request headers and segments out the calls based on information in the header. So we have one set in there for Google, and we have another one set in there for Bing. And so we, we are able to see Bing crawling our site directly in AppDynamics. On, our main, on the main chart in, in CarMax.com at the very top, there was a blue blob, if you remember. That blue blob is the summation of all SEO traffic running against our site. We get quite a bit of SEO traffic because we really care about it because we want to have an SEO optimized website. So we're able to see them crawling our site directly. We're able to know how they're crawling us. We're able to know our response time in crawls. And we're able to see that BingBot was crawling us to our peak customer times. As it turns out, whoever set up our BingBot configuration for the crawl of our site misconfigured it and said, crawl us during the high business traffic time. So BingBot was faithfully doing what we told it to do. We were able to reverse that graph to say, crawl us during our lower traffic times. And then we were able to feel more, or then we were able to, again, lower the load a little bit more to buy us a little bit more time. Key takeaways for CarMax is we, AppDynamics has given us way deeper insight into our application performance than we ever had before. It's, it's revolutionary for us. We have way more information now than we ever did before AppDynamics. It's greatly increased our collaboration and our innovation. By having this single unified point of reference with all the information that we need together in one spot that everybody can access from developers to QA, to actually business users can access it as well, but we have this unified vision of here's how the application is performing and allows us to collaborate better and allows us to innovate more quickly. It's greatly increased our speed and efficiency both in delivering software and in our software process and it's enabled us to deliver with confidence. We can feel very good about a release based on looking at the information in AppDynamics post-release.